Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Big Block Construction Limited Q1 FI23 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touch tone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Karan Thakkar. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Karan Thakkar on behalf of Essential Technologies. I welcome you all to Big Block Construction Limited Q1 FY23 Earnings Conference Call. From the management, we have Mr. Narayan Sabu, Chairman and Executive Director, Mr. Naresh Sabu, Managing Director, Mr. Mohit Sabu, Director and CFO, and Mr. Manish Sabu, Marketing and Strategy. I would request you to refer to the investor presentation that has been uploaded on the exchange, which will throw much more light. Starting with statutory declarations, certain statements in the call call may be forward-looking. These statements are based on management's current expectations and are subject to uncertainty and changes in circumstances. These statements are not guarantees of future results. May I now request Mr. Mohit Sabu to take us through his opening remarks, subsequent to which we can open the floor for the Q&A session. Thank you. Over to Mohit. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to welcome all of you to the Q1 FY23 conference call for Big Block Construction Limited. Big Block Construction Limited is India's uh, premier AAC blocks manufacturing company. And we are currently uh, involved in manufacturing of AAC blocks as well as uh, other materials which are block jointing mortar, uh, ready mix cluster as well as uh, coming up with AAC panels soon. Currently we have two plants installed at, in Gujarat, one of them at Umargao near Wapi and other at Ahmedabad. So from the Umargao plant we are catering to the markets of Mumbai, Pune, Wapi, Silvasa. And from the plant near Ahmedabad, the markets of Ahmedabad, Baroda, and Indore, and some regions of MB. AAC blocks is a green building material which is used as a direct substitute for red brick. And it is manufactured as using fly ash, which is 65% of our raw materials. Fly ash is a waste from the thermal power plant, and that is the reason that it is called a green building material. The other additives used for manufacturing the product are cement, lime, aluminium powder system and some other additives. Coming down to the quarterly performance, so Big Block Construction has seen a uh, revenue growth of almost 100% from 282 million in Q1 FY22 to 556 million in Q1 FY23. The EBITDA has gone up from 33 million in Q1 FY22 to 122 million in Q1 FY23. Also, the volume sales have increased by 33% from 96,000 CBM to 1,27,000 CBM. And the EPS has also seen a phenomenal jump from 17, rupees, uh, 17 pesa per share to 1 rupees 19 pesa per share. This was a phenomenal quarter for the company because uh, in this quarter, uh, we have seen phenomenal growth in terms of volume as well as revenues. And also, the profitability has seen a tremendous jump. Also, during the quarter, uh, we have uh, acquired uh, land for our plant expansions at WADA. So, we are coming up with one more plant at WADA, which will be uh, one of India's largest AAC plants when it's fully commercialized. We have bought land of 9.5 acres, which uh, will be, the plant will be installed at this, in this land. The construction has already began. And the plant is divided into two phases of 2.5 lakhs each. The reason we are uh, installing the plant is why there are huge subsidy benefits also uh, for, uh, in this region because it is not an industry develop, industrially developed region. We have placed order for majority of the machines to be installed at this plant and we intend to start commercial production at this plant by December 22. Also, we will be coming up with one more expansion, uh, which will be in a JV with uh, the Thai company, Siam Cement Group, SCG. In this plant, we will be manufacturing AAC blocks as well as panels. 
the JV company is already incorporated and the capital infusion is done for the same. We are currently in the process of land identification and land acquisition for the JV company, which we intend to complete in the running quarter. Also, we would like to uh, make one announcement that we generate uh, carbon credits as we are using Flyash, which is a base for the thermal power plants. And uh, the, uh, the carbon credits generated are still in stock. We haven't uh, disposed them off. I think we can open the floor for some questions and everything now. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touch tone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of John Matthew, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, am I audible? Yes. Okay, so uh, I have a few questions. Uh, have you seen any capacity increase done by any unorganized players in this quarter? And second is, is there any major difference between prices of our blocks vis-a-vis -vis and unorganized players? So frankly, in this quarter, we haven't seen any capacity increase, but uh, there is a bit of a capacity increase coming, upcoming from a few competitors as well in the upcoming quarters. Mm -hmm. And uh, regarding, uh, uh, what was the other question? Uh, do you see any major differences between the price of our blocks versus an unorganized player? So uh, generally we are, uh, you know, one of the oldest and the organized players in the industry. And uh, that's the reason that our prices uh, are a little bit higher than the unorganized player by approximately uh, 3 to 6 percentage depending from time to time. Okay, okay. Uh, well, uh, the price for uh, bricks and blocks both have come down a little in this quarter. So how do you see it for, let's say, this financial year? So uh, the prices for bricks and blocks both have come down. One reason is, uh, you know, uh, the uh, overall costing has also come down for lots of things because uh, cement and aluminum powder, all the metals have also witnessed some uh, slowdown. And that is the reason that uh, prices for both the things have come down. But uh, going further, I don't see uh, any further corrections in prices. And moreover, you know, the way real estate uh, and, you know, the upcoming demand is shaping up, uh, it doesn't seem to be challenging at all. Okay, okay. Just to address it more, uh, we are replacing red bricks, which is happening at a much faster pace now. Right. Red are still uh, at a share of almost uh, 85, 87 percentage, whereas AAC blocks is at a, at a share of 8 to 9 percentage. And red bricks today is still expensive than AAC blocks on a peer-to-peer -peer comparison without counting the advantages of AAC blocks. Okay, okay. Uh, well, uh, are you looking for any organic or inorganic acquisition or any plans to increase capacity by outsourcing from unorganized players? We are open to those ideas of organic and inorganic operation uh, acquisitions. But uh, regarding, uh, you know, the contract manufacturing from unorganized players, uh, frankly, that doesn't uh, seem to be very viable or practical because we'd rather do it on our own. That's what we feel. Okay. The other manufacturer also, if we try to get a contract manufacturing done from them, nobody has a spare capacity as uh, most of everyone's, uh, you know, capacities are sold out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the earlier question, uh, as you said that the prices of bricks and blocks have come down. Uh, so if I talk about this financial year, do, do you see it coming down or what will be your target in terms of profits? Currently, the prices that have, that have come down, that is only because of the reduction in cost. 
so uh, okay. that's why uh, you know uh, we don't see any further reduction in cost also because everything seems to have been stabilized whether steel cement or even aluminum powder and everything and uh, mm-hmm. again uh, once uh, you know the monsoon uh, finishes from september onwards we further see upward trend in pricing because cement and all is also bound to go up because of uh, the infra demand and everything which is a little slow in uh, this quarter Great, great. Uh, okay, one last question from my end. Uh, what is your uh, current working capital cycle? Uh, approximately, it's at around fifty to fifty-five days. Okay, all right, great. Well, that's all I need for now, and thank you for your time, and wish you all the very best. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Anika Mittal from. Invest research. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Am I audible, sir? Uh, yes. Could you be a little louder? Oh yes, yes, sir. Sure, sure. Uh, sir, my question is from a uh, side of your uh, inward leg side, basically. Uh, as we know, a uh, fly ash constitutes sixty-five percent of our total raw material consumption, and currently we are getting it free of cost. Nevertheless, uh, this situation may not continue in the future. Uh, as you know, uh, bidding for fly ash has already started for some of the thermal plants. So basically, my questions are uh, one: whether we are going to make payment for the fly ash in the near term or in the long term, and in that scenario, how we are going to control our margins. And second one is, as you know, uh, due to the renewable energy taking over the thermal power, it is likely that the thermal plants will be uh, facing the shutdown in operations in the future. So in that, uh, that may lead to the problem in the supply of fly ash. So what are the alternatives, and how we are going to tackle that scenario? Sir? So just to uh, uh, we'll take it in two ways. One thing is fly ash. Uh, so we are using pond ash. We are not using fly ash. So pond ash is the uh, ash which has been accumulated uh, in the pond or near the thermal power plants since the last twenty, thirty, forty years since the thermal power plants have been running. And currently we are not paying anything for that. And I don't even see that pond ash will be saleable material because the use of pond ash are very limited. And coming down uh, to the other point that uh, you know. Uh, Solar on and other multi uh, energies. Uh, we see that uh, you know the green energy and everything is rising, and there's no doubt about it. But still, you know, uh, India. Uh, there have been re- recent uh, various articles which have always mentioned that India is facing tremendous power shortage, and all the thermal power plants have run in phenomenal uh, capacity in, in the last quarter. Uh, also to address your question so uh, at one of our facilities we are already making sand waste blocks as well other than fly ash so just in case you know 5 years 10 years down the line there is uh, any scarcity or you know unavailability of fly ash our plants can always shift to sand instead of fly ash uh, for your information uh, majority of ac block plants in uh, europe Uh, are running on sand and not fly ash because uh, those countries don't have fly ash. And uh, what is the source of this uh, sand basically? Is it environment friendly source or uh, something else? So it's basically it's uh, river sand. River sand, you are saying? Yes. And currently, how much basically? Uh, 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 how much of the total capacity uh, we are producing from the this river sand base? So uh, at our Ahmedabad unit, we are. Uh, Approximately anywhere around 20-25 percent, we are making sand waste. And you are okay. saying five years down the line, uh, if that happens, means fly ash is not available, or uh, they are charging the prices. So, uh, is it the sand is sand ash is also free of cost or not? Uh, sorry, sand is uh, sand ash is also free of cost for us. Uh, no sand. Again, we'll have to pay some transportation cost. Otherwise, the costs are quite negligible, not much. And also the pond, as uh, Mohit said, uh, you know, fly ash pond, which are which have accumulated fly ash for the last 20, 30 years. Still, I'm sure there is so much ash in them that there is no issues for the next 10 to 15 years. So, are we the only place which, uh, uh, who is producing AAC blocks uh, via this uh, bond ash you are saying? So, uh, so we are not the only player. There are other players who are uh, making uh, using a pond ash. But still, thermal power plants are, uh, you know, they are still have so much ash when they are running that they still have to, uh, you know, uh, they dump still dump these ash, this ash uh, in the pond. 
So we don't see any issue for the next 10 to 15 years at least. And in case still there is an issue, there is a sand always available in Ample. And you are saying the cost of that is very negligible. Yes, cost is negligible, uh, but in case, you know, if the cost also goes up, it will go up for all the manufacturers and the same will result in, you know, the increase in the selling price as well. Okay, understood, sir. And uh, second question is, uh, if we see around the industry, uh, competitive intensity is growing on and a lot, of play, uh, a lot of players are building up their capacities. So my question is, what gives you the competitive advantage? Uh, so, uh, obviously, apart from your strategic location, uh, I'm asking in the terms of product quality or innovation size, uh, based on which we can claim that, yes, uh, we have the monopolistic advantage in the industry. Because if you see uh, capacities are building up at this rate and with the low entry barrier, as you know, so, what shall give us the pricing power, sir? So, as you said, we already have locational advantages and, you know, with the unit coming up at WADA, we'll be almost in the heart of Mumbai. So, anywhere uh, in Mumbai, Pune market, we are uh, the nearest uh, supplier. Other than that, you know, the subsidies will always play a big role, you know, helping the bottom line of the company. And uh, we are uh, coming up with AC panels as well. So that will be a new material and that also is coming up with, uh, you know, a partner who's already uh, established in this field and they have plants uh, in various countries, uh, CM Cement. So I'm sure uh, this uh, innovative uh, new material will again help us, you know, uh, keeping our uh, bottom lines on track. I understood. Uh, as for your uh, earlier phone calls also, you are saying AAC panels, you are the only manufacturer, apart from that magic crate you are saying, uh, that has built the capacities in uh, recent cars. So, what I am asking is, what is the uh, growth scenario you are looking for this AAC panel? So, frankly, uh, you know, uh, in India also, uh, the labor costs and all, uh, all such things are increasing. Material handling and everything is all get, the more getting difficult. So panel will be much faster in construction and also the labor cost will go down drastically. So eventually uh, from AC blocks, uh, the other uh, alternative material will be panels. And apart from that, uh, the consumption of red bricks is also supposed to keep on getting uh, reduced uh, day up by day. So conversion from uh, red bricks to AC blocks and from AC blocks to panels is that's what we see in the upcoming future. So I understood this thing, but your existing facilities that are producing AC blocks, so, can these facilities also be used for producing the AAC panels? Because uh, if the shift happens, then what will be the use of the existing capacity you are having? We can upgrade our existing plants also for manufacturing of AAC panels. Uh, we'll have to do some technological modifications and install some ad additional machinery for the panels. That's what will be required, as simple as that. And this AAC plants you are producing uh, via uh, your new plant, uh, JV, in Ahmedabad, right? Yes. And when will be the commissioning, expected commissioning? So, we are currently in the phase of land identification and acquisition. And tentatively, we intend to start commercial production at that unit by June 23. June 23 years. And uh, in the recent past, you have provided the revenue guidance of 500 CR, uh, approximately by the end of financial year 24. So, looking towards the existing utilization, uh, we should be at the volume level of uh, 10,070,000 uh, 10, approx. Uh, for 500 crore cut-off line. So that is uh, around 77% utilization. And I hope by uh, financial year 25, we can grow uh, based on the remaining utilization. So my question is regarding your plans after financial year 25, how we as a company are going to shape? So currently we have presence uh, in Western India region only. Uh, and post uh, completion of these two units, one at WADA and the other plant in JV near Ahmedabad, we intend to go pan India by setting up a plant uh, in north as well as in south. Okay, you are targeting the north and as well as south. Yes. After uh, 25 years, thing. No? Uh, once we uh, commercialize uh, both the existing plant expansions, then we'll take up uh, the other locations of north and, and south. The expected ramp up, I think, it should be by the end of financial year 25. You know. Uh, by FI 25, 26 years. 25, 26 years. Thing. And a little bit confirmation only on that, uh, that, that side only. Uh, means you are saying uh, you are producing from the bone ash. And if uh, you are not uh, in the near future, you are not going to pay for the fly ash. Are you, uh, in, am I right in getting that point? Yes, uh, we have fly. been producing from bone ash since the last 11-12 uh, years. And uh, 
we keep on i mean we have our people visiting the ponds also frequently every 15 days or something and uh, there's enough stock at the pond uh, from where we are procuring in such a way that at least for the next 5 7 years we won't face any challenges with that then show we uh, for 5 7 years we are not going that uh, from the for the umargaon plant or for the wada plant we have uh, ash available from uh, the danu thermal power plant which belongs to adani plus the nasik thermal power plant or the okoi thermal power plant and similarly for the plant uh, near andabad we have uh, manasbori thermal power plant near baroda and plus there's another thermal power plant in gandhinagar and there is a uh, 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 accumulated uh, sand available uh, accumulated ash available and uh, you are not seeing any problem for next 5 to 6 year yes that's right okay so understood thank you for uh, thank you for your time sir all the best thank you next question is from the line of pranay jain from d level capital please go ahead thank you for the opportunity uh, i have about three questions uh, but the first one is on uh, pricing and margin um, it, it's great to see that uh, the margin trajectory continues to climb up and uh, from uh, 20 and a half uh, we are uh, 22 uh, plus right now so just wanted to understand uh what should be the sustainable margin uh, for the year i understand from season to season there can be some uh, softness uh, but uh, otherwise uh, what's the range that we are looking to maintain in frankly uh, the margins that we have uh, announced in the last two quarters uh, these seem to be sustainable because in spite of the slowdown that we witnessed in uh, q1 fy23 our margins have been uh, you know maintained accordingly and going forward uh, the real estate and uh, overall infra and everything is supposed poised to grow that's what uh, the government is concentrating on and that's why we see the margins to be at least uh, sustainable at this level or it could further go up as well so currently are we uh, at optimum utilization of our facility yes uh, we are at optimum utilization uh, we are at almost 85 90% plus utilization there has been a uh, little lower utilization in the current month because of uh, torrential rains in the western region in the july month okay. but still we were at around 85 to 90% so uh, and you believe that uh, post uh, this uh, monsoon quarter uh, there is a chance uh, as activity picked up uh, pricing perhaps can also improve a little bit for the after the Of yes, because uh, I mean, frankly, uh, it is a poise to go up because uh, red brick is still expensive, and if we, uh, you know, just try and match those prices, then we can still see in anywhere between 10 to 15 percent rise in trees as well going ahead. I read uh, uh, a Gujarati uh, notice or circular that was uh, passed around uh, where the body was uh, seeking relief due to the. gst uh, burden and and many units uh, which uh, manufacture red brick were shutting down so just wanted to understand uh, are we uh, seeing closure of several such units which enables us to increase our market share and and what is the market share you anticipate over the coming 1 2 years for our products from where it stands so uh, frankly the market share is poised to grow up continuously because uh, you know uh, the product is uh, reaching far, uh, far and wide I and mean, earlier it used to sell only in cities and towns like bombay surat and everything but of lately uh, quarter over quarter we have been witnessing demand from small towns and small cities as well and uh, as we mentioned earlier that you know we are doing contract manufacturing from for ambuja also so uh, you know because of their presence uh, the awareness in uh, rural areas and because of their dealer distributor networks in small towns the demand from there is also increasing so it's just that kit uh, penetration is being done through them but overall uh, and and large we are also benefiting from the same so what would be our market share as of fy22 close or presently Uh, market share as compared to red bricks so red bricks as per our understanding would be somewhere around 80 to 85 percentage whereas ac block somewhere would be around 8 to 10 percentage so we are 10 percent approximately of the ac industry yes but that is pan india we don't have exact uh, you know uh, bifurcation That's area to be observed not such 
accurate reports available to be very frank and and uh, it could uh, read say 15% in a couple of years time uh, as a result of uh, not just uh, our clients but also our own distribution efforts is that uh, plausible i think it should definitely reach that because the government is also trying to push uh, towards you know more organized and greener construction and uh, you know uh, like uh, introducing gst on red brick manufacturers which is like a cottage industry and they don't know the compliance and everything for gst so i should mention earlier that uh, they have uh, read the article that they are telling that they won't uh, do manufacturing any further and all so looking at all those things and looking at the support from government uh, it seems that uh, we should be able to reach up to at least 15% in the upcoming uh, couple of years easily and with regards to the additional capacity that's coming up i know uh, our wada plant should be ready by uh, december but overall when we are looking to add 8 lakhs by when do you see it uh, coming on stream uh, are we tracking on time so uh, we are doing wada also in phases in phase 1 we are doing 2.5 lakhs which should be commercialized by december and phase 2 will be another 2.5 lakhs which should commercialize by tentatively june 23 and similarly the endeavor plant uh, will also be uh, will be 3 lakhs which will be tentatively commercialized uh, by june 23 and uh, i think uh, entire capacity ramp up and uh, you know uh, fully utilization of the new installed capacities should also happen by uh, december 23 or uh, march 24 so between now and december 23 uh what is the potential from uh, new product introduction that we are penciling whether it is uh, panels or magic read or anything else that is in our r&d uh, team uh, what what percentage of our revenue or what size do you see possible in the next 18 to 24 months so uh, the wada plant that we are doing it is just for ac blocks currently and uh, the cherry plant that we'll be doing with scg near amdavad will be for panels as well as blocks we'll be having the option of manufacturing both at that location block being uh, you know the product which is replacing red brick because what will happen is uh, panels is a much advanced than a superior product and comparatively expensive as compared to ac block as well so it will be first adapted by uh, the more organized and uh, the bigger builders which includes the likes of lnt or roda whereas uh, a red uh, ac block uh, will be used for conversion from red brick uh, um, uh, users and looking at the percentage of uh, the share of uh, panels so uh, i think for uh, the plant will be of 3 lakh cubic meter and in the initial years we just see uh, in fy23 we see panel utilization of almost 20 to 30 percentage understood uh, also with regards to our uh, longer term plan uh what is the increase in distribution uh, efforts we are taking uh, whether it is on ground presence or to uh, large builder project uh because i i see that that is an important pillar of our sustainable plan so other than products uh, entering new markets with new products we just wanted to understand uh, how strong are we on on that plan if you could give us some color some numbers some names so uh, you know uh, we have been concentrating on increasing our sales either to the uh, you know the large uh, players which includes the likes of lota runwal lnt bg shirke and capacite and also contractors because they are huge upcoming projects and that's what we concentrate on and giving them the best quality product as well as timely services because timely delivery of product is also a very big aspect in this industry and regarding uh, tapping new markets and also uh, you know we are trying to increase our team as well so that uh, and we have already increased a uh, few of our team who are joining us slowly and gradually to reach far covering markets uh, including the markets of uh, nasik as well as uh, further going down in mumbai near roa raigad as well as alibag and also locations got it uh, so just lastly uh, you expect uh, the second half to be again a seasonally stronger part of the year is yes, definitely because uh, in the first half of the uh, I mean, from this uh, from april to june because of holi and everything there is some water labor shortage and from july to september because of monsoon there is a little bit of a slow down because uh, the rains in this region are sometimes torrential which we have witnessed in the current month 
and from October to March, March it is considered to be the most peak uh, construction activity period. So at that time, we definitely uh, expect it to be better. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of R. Shraddha Somani, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Mr. Shraddha, please go ahead with your question. Mr. Shraddha, if you have muted yourself from your phone, please unmute yourself. Since there is no reply from the line of Ms. Shraddha, we'll move to the next participant. The next one is Sham Garg from Nivesha. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Thank you for the opportunity and a very good set of numbers. Uh, my first question is with respect to uh, what is what is the order book do we have right now? Uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Sham, uh, can you come again on the question once? Yes. What is the amount of order book do we have right now? So uh, we uh, are currently running at an order book of almost uh, seven to ten days, uh, which is a, a current order book uh, pertaining to uh, you know torrential rains and everything. Okay, so uh, in value terms, what would be the uh, amount of the order book? Hello. Hello. Yes. Uh, in terms of. Uh, uh, six, seven crores. But what happens in this industry is, uh, you know, uh, it's a bulky material, and uh, people don't have storage space uh, at that size as well, because that construction size is almost uh, crammed up in cities like Bombay as well as Ahmedabad. So that's the reason that uh, we don't have huge running order books. So people give us orders, uh, and they expect del uh, delivery to be reaching within uh, with them in the three to five days. That's how the industry works, and uh, owing to uh, you know torrential rains in the last uh, 10, 15 days in Ahmedabad as well as Bombay, both the regions, uh, all the sites were a little slow, and uh, they had to uh, you know do a lot of efforts in maintaining their sites. But uh, the order book in monsoon season seems to be pretty good for us, as for monsoon. Okay, uh, with respect to the distribution uh, distribution channel. Contacts with a uh, few luxury project build, uh, builders like Loda and other builders. So, what is the uh, working? Uh, what is the payback period from them? From how much time do we get the uh, realize the payment from them? So, generally, uh, uh, these big builders, which includes the likes of Loda and MD Runwal, uh, generally end up getting their payments on an average in around 70, 75 days. Okay. Okay. So, so, with respect to the uh, Del North region, so there are few luxury high end project builders who are saying that uh, they are moving back to Red Bricks again. Recently, uh, while building this uh, AAC block, they found that uh, the block is not that strong for drilling. Uh, for the inside wall, so they are shifting back to red bricks. So can you give some outlook on that? Frankly, we haven't come across any such uh, things as to people are moving back to red bricks again. But uh, with regards to the product and everything, so uh, what we have witnessed in the last uh, one, one and a half year is uh, the more organized or the stronger players are somewhat moving from uh, AAC blocks to uh, my one structure in some aspect, but that is again much more expensive and also for the internal walls, uh, even in spite of using myron structure, they are using uh, AAC blocks only as partitions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Somil Mehta from Mehta Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, am I audible? Yes, please. 
Uh, I just have a quick couple of questions. Uh, I just want to know what is the progress on the plans with SEG International, and I believe the plans with SEG as well will be commenced in a phase-wise manner. So, could you just tell me how much will they contribute in terms of margin initially? So, uh, for the plans with SEG, we are still in land acquisition and identification phase, and we intend to complete the land acquisition in the running quarter by September 22. and with regard to uh, the commencement or installation of that plant so it won't be in uh, phases we'll be doing that plant uh, at one shot all together uh, where we'll put up a capacity for 3 lakhs but uh, that plant will again be expandable to 5 lakhs in future okay and could you shed some light on how much will they contribute in terms of margin so uh, the company is already incorporated and the uh, sharing ratio is 50 to 100% is being held by big block and 48% by scg and the uh, equity contribution will also be in the same ratio okay okay great that's it from my side thank you so much thank you thank you next question is from the line of pranay jain from dealwell capital please go ahead thanks for the opportunity again uh, just a couple of uh, quick questions one is uh, just wanted to understand what are the carbon credits that we have accumulated uh, at present and uh, how uh, do we intend to monetize it uh, in the future uh, just for uh, a lay investors understanding so um, at, uh, we are registered for carbon credits uh, because we are using fly ash and uh, at our unit at umargaon we are generating uh, 60000 units every year and audit is done uh, for the same and we are we have accumulated almost around 40 to 45000 units which uh, which is for the period till august uh, 21 and for the next audit uh, we are uh, just appointing the consultant for the same and uh, we should begin the audit which takes a period of about 3 to 4 months and uh, we have uh, held on the credits right now and not sold it because of the russian war and everything the carbon credit prices had come down but now again the upper tra- uh, trajectory has started on the same so once we see the pricing uh, to you know reach a good level we might end up uh, monetizing them Uh, also you know we uh, from our past experiences we have seen that the prices remain uh, better in the uh, second half of the year and the best uh, the prices we can get maybe is in the last quarter so we'll uh, monetize it at the best possible time got it so uh, just for uh, simple understanding let's say we have 1 uh, lakh carbon credits right now what would be the present value of the same So currently, we are looking at the currently the market price is around four dollars approximately, but we are looking at uh, you know I, we are expecting that it should reach anywhere between five and six dollars in the next uh, couple of months. And this, of course, would be uh, tax uh, efficient, or or would it attract uh, a pretty high tax? Ten taxes. So current taxation is ten percent, but I think that uh, for that also a case is going on somewhere in Supreme Court for the same. got it uh, and a second thing that i saw in the investor presentation is uh, we are now actively looking at export opportunities i mean uh, there were two regions uh, named like sri lanka and middle east i don't know what's possible in sri lanka given the current affairs but but uh, what do we uh, uh, anticipate in in middle east so uh, frankly uh, the trade rates and everything are coming uh, pretty high but uh, you know uh, once uh, the freight rates keep on going down we might to be able to explore export opportunities also and earlier in the past we did some uh, you know experimentation by sending out some samples to uh, uk and european markets uh, but uh, then the freight rates increased drastically so that didn't turn out viable but uh, we got our sample, you know uh, product approved and everything that way so in the next uh, one year Do you see uh, our our products uh, landing in Middle East and parts of Europe? It really depends on the freight rates, and uh, you know, uh, as the new Ada plant is also coming up, which will be very very near to the port, uh, the Navasheva port. So we definitely have an opportunity. But once freight stabilizes, we can definitely try and explore those. Okay, but maybe the inquiries or or demand is such that. 
domestically it will get absorbed and uh, so we want see, to uh, uh, I mean the demand is pretty good but then yes we should definitely try and explore the opportunity in case we get one okay so looks uh, looks something uh, which is for next year perhaps not much for this year then yes definitely after our uh, wada uh, unit starts okay thank you thank you thank you next question is from the line of anika mittal from envis research please go ahead uh, hello thanks uh, thanks for giving the opportunity again uh, basically my question is regarding uh, what is your expectation regarding uh, ebitda margins depreciation and interest cost on full year basis uh, for financial year 23 and 24 going forward so fy 2324 the ebitda margin that we are reported in the current quarter Uh, those are easily maintainable, but we can even see some upward trajectory in the same uh, in the later half of the year. Sir, it is 22 percent. This is, uh, I think, uh, are you sure uh, we are able to maintain that in future? A bit of margin. Yes, sir, because uh, frankly, uh, even though Q1 was a little slow, in spite of that, uh, you know, we have been able to maintain those margins. And apart from that, as you mentioned earlier, that uh, you know, you know. later on uh, the second year, half of the year the demand and everything is much more better than this and we even see the pricing to go up understood sir and what about the depreciation interest cost on a full year basis so uh, the depreciation and interest cost would uh, continue to uh, remain on similar level as it is in the you know on this quarter this is basically around historically 10 cr accumulately so you are saying this will be the 10 cr only because you are uh, doing the capex i think it should increase uh, in the terms of depreciation so the capex we are expecting to commercial i mean uh, till uh, december uh, we expect the capex to be completed until then everything will be uh, you know uh, amortized in the you know cost of plant and everything and uh, thereafter uh, from jan onwards we uh, expect to start commercial production and uh, from that point also we expect to get uh, similar margins so you know interest and depreciation cost will increase but uh, at that point of time uh, similarly the production and uh, the volumes as well as the profitability will also go up so more or less what are our sustainable pat margin for future Hello. So uh, the current margins that we are uh, witnessing in the current quarter is easily sustainable. Ni, uh, I am talking about the PAT margin. Uh, PAT margin. Sorry. Uh, uh, PAT pro. PAT margins, not a beta margin. I am talking about PAT margin. So uh, that's what, as I said, uh, that even though the new plant is coming up and that uh, interest and depreciation will go up, but we will even start to get uh, volumes uh, immediately once we begin commercial production from uh, December. Okay. So can we expect it on an average a nine to ten percent PAT margin, as historically we are able to maintain? I think we can expect better PAT margins of somewhere between twelve uh, to fifteen percentage. Twelve to fifteen percent, you are saying? Okay. 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 And uh, what is our effective tax uh, tax rate? That is applicable. Uh, around twenty five, twenty six percentage. Okay. Understood, sir. Thank Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is on the line of R. Shraddha Sumani, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. So, so what I wanted to know is, uh, which are the regions in which we, you know, have the highest sales, and it would be helpful if you could specify in terms of percentage. Uh, so, um, Bombay is one of our um, biggest markets, and the sales from Bombay are almost at around fifty uh, percentage. Uh, Ahmedabad being almost the second biggest market, market with a sales of almost thirty uh, percentage. uh baroda uh, being uh, the third biggest with a sales of around 5 to 7 percentage rapi and pune also contributing anywhere around 5 to 7 percentage and other small towns are contributing another 5 to 7 percentage okay and uh, are we planning to expand in you know other regions and what we currently are present in So we currently have two planned expansions. One is at Wada, uh, and uh, this is in the JV company with SCG near Ahmedabad, 
and first uh, these expansions uh, we intend to uh, you know go uh, north as well as south so, so one plan near delhi and the other near hyderabad or bangalore and uh, if you could uh, provide with any potential capacity for them sorry any potential capacity of those plants what would that be so we haven't taken up those expansions on hand but uh, more or less uh, uh, you know principally we'll be putting up a plant of 5 lakh cubic meters only at those locations this month okay thank you thank you thank you next question is from the line of surid tiora from paladin capital please go ahead Hi, uh, good morning. Uh, good afternoon, sorry. Uh, I have two questions. Firstly, could you tell me what is the aggregate capacity in India for these plants, for AAC plants? The total capacity pan India would be somewhere around 1.5 to 1.8 crores cubic meters pan India. And uh, do you know what is the approximate increase that one could see in the next two, three years in capacity installed? um it's not uh, possible to comment for the next 2 3 years because uh, you know we don't know of everyone's planned expansions to be very frank but in the upcoming one year i think we can see a capacity increase of somewhere around uh, uh, 15 percentage to 20 percentage so 20% of this would be uh 30 lakh yeah approximately 25 to 30 lakh that's what we see in the upcoming uh, 12 to 15 months and uh, the current install base is fully utilized more or less so there is enough room for growth at an aggregate level yes uh, currently uh, you know uh, all the majority of the capacities are all running at uh, capacities of more than 70 to 80 percent we are running at almost 94 95 percent is but uh, the industry would be running at more than 80 percent but uh, you know it depends on plant to plant as to what are their operational levels and everything and what are their efficient capacity utilization levels so in this business i'm i'm assuming that you can only service like 2 300 km radius from your plant right is that a fair assumption uh yes uh, so uh, you know 200 to 300 km is the most ideal but yeah we can go up to a distance of 400 450 km as well but the most ideal is 200 to 300 the max So it's a it's a very localized business. So in your areas, are you seeing massive additional capacities coming up in the west, like in the Bombay and the Bad region? There are a few upcoming capacities in Bombay and the Bad region as well. But you're not concerned that that could impact your sales or your pricing. It wouldn't impact much because the conversion from brick to block is also happening at that pace. and also the construction activity uh, is you know uh, taking uh, increase that much okay and is there a rule of thumb uh, for the capex per meter cube or per thousand meter cube or something how much money would one have to spend typically for a 1 lakh meter cube plant for example uh, you weren't very audible can you come back on the question yeah, is, there, is there like a rule of thumb for the capex required for uh, let's say a, a 1 lakh meter cube plant I'm just trying to understand what it would, what, you know, if there's a a general um, a general number that one could assume. So, uh, frankly speaking, uh, you know, the machinery uh, there's no thumb rule that way, but uh, just uh, for your brief understanding, so for a plant of five lakh cubic meters, you need a land of almost uh, at least eight to nine acres. secondly uh, uh, if you install chinese machinery then the capex is much different and if you install german machinery then the capex is very different mm -hmm. but uh, uh, for us uh, for a 5 lakh cubic meter capacity plant the capex would be somewhere around 60 to 70 crores this is but, uh, for larger organizations these capex end up going much higher like uh, we have witnessed in the past that uh, uh, people like uh, hyderabad industries or uh, ultra tech had installed german plants with and uh, the capacity of the plant was around uh, 3 lakh cubic meters and the capex went up to almost 120 to 130 crores so yours are chinese machine the 60 crores sorry yours are using chinese machine and they are using german machine uh, no we are buying chinese machine And obviously, uh, uh, the last uh, plant that even uh, Dravan Industries put up, they installed Chinese machines. I see. 
Okay. And uh, I, I wanted to just about this clarification. Could you just uh, summarize the various plants you have and the capacities and the new plants coming up and their capacities? I think you mentioned it earlier, but I didn't catch all the details. Yeah, so we have uh, currently one unit uh, near Umargao, which is in near Wapi, and uh, this is a capacity of 325,000 cubic meters per annum. And the other plant near uh, Ahmedabad uh, at Kapadwanj, uh, the capacity of this plant is around 250,000 cubic meters per annum. These two are the currently operational plants, and uh, the other two plants that we are coming up with is one in uh, Wada in Palgar, Palgar district which will be a 500,000 cubic meter capacity plant, but it will be in two phases. So 2.5 lakhs in the beginning and 2.5 lakhs in phase two. And one more plant that we are coming up will be again uh, in uh, near in the vicinity of Ahmedabad itself, which will be another 300,000 cubic meter in the beginning, which is in the JV company with SCG, CM Cement Group. Mm -hmm. And in that we will be manufacturing AAC blocks as well as panels. You said 300,000 in phase one, I think there's a phase two possible here too. Uh, sorry, it wasn't very clear again. You said 300,000 in phase one for the new Ahmedabad plant. Yeah. So what would the phase two capacity be? Uh, so we have uh, right now just signed for 300,000, but uh, the plant uh, that we'll be installing will be expandable to 500,000. Okay, and could you just repeat the timeline for WADA phase one that will be ready by December 22, right? Yeah, WADA phase 1 by December 22 tentatively and phase 2 by um, June 22, uh, June 23. Okay. And uh, the JV company plant uh, near Ahmedabad with SCG by June 23 again. Phase 1, that is uh, 300,000. And you've got the money in place to do all of this capex? Sorry, I didn't get it again. You've got the, you have the funds to do all of this capex? Uh, yes. So uh, we have got the bank finance done for the WADA plant, but uh, majority of our share of CAPEX, uh, like we have already done land acquisition, place orders for machineries, given the advance to the supplier, began commercial uh, and the construction activities at the plant. So all that is already done uh, from our sources. And you don't need to raise equity in the near future for any of these expansion or for future expansion plans? For these uh, planned expansions, uh, you know, the generations that we're getting from the company are sufficient enough. But uh, we are open to, uh, you know, raising equity as well, um, if uh, there's some good equity partner willing to sit with us for a long period. As we'll be coming up with more expansion in north as well as south in the upcoming season. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, that you may press star and one to ask a question. As there are no further questions, we have reached the end of question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Mohit Sabu for closing comments. Thank you everyone for attending the investor Q1 FY23 investor call of Big Block Construction Limited today. As you have seen, a phenomenal quarter with amazing growth, and we uh, intend to continue this growth in the upcoming future. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. On behalf of Sanchal Technologies, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your line.